most hardware guys will try and convince you a computer is best run with the cover off. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about something called electrostatic discharge or ESD. And we'll talk about the measures that are required in order to avoid damaging our electronics when it comes to static electricity. Now, many years ago when I worked out in industry, worked in a large laboratory with plenty of anti-static precautions put into place. We had these large mats that were on the tables that kept the, elect kept, kept the uh, electrostatic discharge down to a minimum. We you know, regularly used wrist straps, we'll talk about those too in a minute, which kept my body grounded to the point where it would save the electronics. That said, I had a coworker who came in one day after I had been working on my machine or while I was working on my machine, I had my cover taken off because I was installing or working on devices in here and I hadn't quite put it back on, but I wanted to test it. You know, if I tested it and it didn't work, I didn't want to have to be taking the cover on and off. Back in those days, it was difficult to take the covers off of these things. So, Bill walked in and he just put his arm on my machine. I saw the static electricity jump from his arm into my machine and the machine just turned off. Just, just shut down. And when it did, I tried to power it back up and it wouldn't come back up. It actually told me that the hard drive was damaged and the, and the operating system files were corrupt. Now, I don't think that Bill actually had any malice towards me that he wanted to damage the machine, but what I do know is that you cannot predict whenever these electrostatic discharges are going to occur. So you have to take precautions anytime that you're working with electronics. Now, and you might be, might be surprised what devices have electronics in them. Some devices may look like maybe just a cable, but embedded inside of there, there are these small ICs that do some sort of conversions or some sort of a uh, signal uh, uh, signal boosting in order to make it so that the device works properly. It doesn't take that much voltage to damage one of these. If you've got the IC and its connections to the outside world, the pins, they actually have some protective circuitry in there. But the protective circuitry for most devices is only good to about 30 volts. Electrostatic discharge Creating 30 volts is nothing. In fact, whenever you feel that little prick of, this, the, the, of the zap, right, when you reach for a doorknob or something, you're actually talking about thousands of volts. Current's really low, so it's not gonna hurt you, but the damage is done to the, the, uh, the ICs. So, and, and really, you'd be surprised. You know, you don't understand. It's summertime. Well not whenever I'm recording this, but it's summertime and the humidity is up and I don't have to worry about uh, electrostatic discharge. Yeah, turns out doing something as simple as drinking from a styrofoam cup, that will create enough, or enough static electricity in you to damage in the components. Let's talk about PCs briefly. First of all, any electronics, whenever you're working on them, they should be unplugged. But the chassis of these machines are what we call an earth ground. They should be connected to an earth ground. Now, when they're unplugged, it's not physically connected to earth ground, but you know, there's enough conductivity in each one of these chassis for a machine like this, that if I'm just touching this, I should be grounded enough or my voltage different, the voltage difference between me, the potential, and the device should be zero. In fact, oftentimes whenever I'm working on a machine like this, I'll just make sure I have a sleeve rolled up and I'll make sure that I'm putting my wrist or my forearm on a on an unpainted piece of metal in order to ground me so that I don't have any sort of electrostatic discharge to damage the machine. Of course, Bill was touching, Bill, Bill wasn't necessarily touching uh, anything that looked like a component, right? But he came close enough to it in order to do the damage. All right. The other thing about whenever it comes to PCs, unplugging them doesn't necessarily mean that there's no voltage that could hurt you. Remember, what we're also talking about here in terms of these electrostatic discharge precautions is to make sure that you're safe, make sure that you don't accidentally hurt yourself. One of the things that you do is take off any rings. I actually have uh, wedding bands that are made from silicon, so that, those are safe. Um, anything con conductive, you don't want to have it on your hands or wrists. 
but also there may be some stray voltages in here and oftentimes all you have to do in order to clear those voltages is whenever you after you unplug the machine hold the power down for an extended period of time that should discharge everything you sometimes can see whenever we have these DC to DC converters they store charge and sometimes when you unplug it you'll notice that LEDs on the motherboard and so forth are still on because of that residual charge you want to discharge everything on the machine whenever you unplug it all right another thing is if you've got to handle electronic devices keep them in their anti-static bags keep them in the bags that are that kind of silverish color and typically what they have is this symbol on them that shows that they are static there they, they will prevent anti-static discharge okay or excuse me prevent electrostatic discharge but if you find yourself absolutely in an unavoidable position and cannot pick up a board just try and pick it up by for example uh, you know if you've got these extended these expansion cards in the machine sometimes what you can do is you can hold them by the 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 little bracket that they mount on the machine with or hold it by the edges of the card please understand i am not condoning this but if you don't have any other choice and need to move that card don't touch any of the conductive pads in order to protect it from any sort of uh, anti-static discharge all right um and and by the way you know this this idea of well the event when bill came in and touched my machine um it's not always a catastrophic result sometimes the part even though it's been damaged by electrostatic discharge sometimes the part still works but what we've done is reduce the lifespan to possibly you know months or weeks before it fails and you may think okay well wow the hard drive failed or the hard disk failed or 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 the you know that network card failed yeah it didn't just fail it had started failing whenever we had an electro electrostatic discharge now what are some other preventative measures well some other preventative measures include the use of these mats in my la in in my in my personal workshop i've got one of the electrostatic mats and those mats are conductive now they're not metal do not think that oh i know what i can do i can have a sheet of aluminum and i can work on that and that'll keep me grounded right no no what you don't want to have something that will short the devices what you want to do is have something that will draw away the excess voltage but in a good you know in a in a good manner and not an instant like a short circuit so these anti-static mats they basically if you were to measure the resistance between any two points there's actually a resistance so there's not a sudden immediate flow of electrons it just kind of draws the excess electrons away now these mats typically need to be connected to something we call earth ground think about your electrical connections the sockets that you plug things into in the wall there are three prongs typically right well that big third prong is typically connected to earth ground earth being a great source of electrons a great source to be able to either take excess ones on or give excess electrons back and so oftentimes what you do is you connect these anti-static mats to an earth ground in fact you can get plugs these connectors that have actually two pla you know where the blades come in and they are they connect to power those on these special plugs are plastic but then the ground the earth ground that's a conductor and what you can do is you plug that in and there are snaps on the outside that will allow you to connect these pre-made cables that connect a snap from that that earth ground to your mat or to a wrist strap we'll talk about wrist straps in a second and that mat then becomes grounded and when you touch it it will draw away any sort of excess voltage that you may have on your body to to um, uh, draw that away so that you don't damage them damage the devices um, we also have these things called wrist straps now wrist straps these anti-static wrist straps these are made so that i don't have to keep a, a part of my skin on the frame in order to keep grounded what that does is it allows the flexibility so you put the wrist strap on you put the connector the you snap the button on and it has this coil that has an alligator clip typically that you can clip onto uh, a ground you know a ground mat either either one of the anti-static mats or possibly one of the connections like you've got with the plug into the wall to connect you to earth ground 
What that does is it makes it so that you have the freedom of movement. I can move around. I don't have to worry about staying connected to ground but yet I stay grounded. But there is a benefit in addition to just the freedom of movement. Uh, some of them have fuses so that if there's an accident, a accidental connection to, uh, to a voltage, you are not suddenly attached to that voltage and getting hurt. Um, and the fuse will blow, which means that every once in a while, in fact, probably before you use them, every time before you use them, you should use a, uh, 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 an ohm meter to check to make sure that there's still a physical connection. Now, when you check to see if there's a physical connection from the button that touches your skin to the alligator clip at the end of that wrist strap, notice that it's not going to be a, sh a short circuit. It's not going to be zero ohms, a direct electrical connection. Because like the anti-static map, it has a little bit of a, of a resistance, you know, a mega ohm or so, so that it allows you to have the electrons, electrons flow away, but not be short-circuited to a voltage if it accidentally comes in contact with it in order to protect you, all right? Now, in addition to these anti-static wrist straps, there are also uh, shoes that you can wear. As long as you have a mat, if your laboratory is set up with a, 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 a flooring, that allows the electrons to be drawn out of you and through your shoes into the floor. Heck, there are even shoes to allow you to not be charged statically, all right? Anyway, that's just a brief introduction to what you probably should expect to do whenever it comes to electrostatic discharge prevention. Keep all of your electronics, if you're not using them in some sort of an electrostatic uh, bag or or in terms of there's 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 these layers of foam that you can put ICs on or these tubes that are all electrostatically protected. So good luck with handling your components and taking care of them.